A Less Than Raw Narcissist, Part 38.6, The Duke's Demise. The Duke of Sussex has travelled to the United Kingdom without his wife, Meghan Markle, as anticipated. It was confirmed that Prince Harry arrived at London's Heathrow Airport on Sunday afternoon, and that he was met by security off the plane and driven to his previous home in Kensington Palace, Nottingham Cottage. If his departure coincided with a respite period during the sustained devaluation that he is now experiencing from Meghan Markle, the nature of the control asserted over him will have been supportive, but making it about hurry back home soon, keep in touch, and so forth. If his departure has coincided with the continuance of the sustained devaluation, he will have experienced more turbulence than he will have done on the flight over the Atlantic. I've detailed in a previous part some of the more malign manipulations that would be utilised against him in order to make it clear to him, albeit done unconsciously, that he must remain under the control of Meghan Markle. As I explained, there was no way that Harry could countenance not attending to do so would very much be the death knell of his relationship with the extended members of his family. It's reported that although his official UK best residence is Frogmore Cottage, the home which is located within the grounds of Windsor Castle, is now being occupied by his cousin, Princess Eugenie, and her husband, Jack Brooksbank. It appears that Nottingham Cottage, which is next door to brother Prince William's home, will be a fitting choice, as the house is currently empty. Harry is expected to quarantine alone ahead of the funeral, which will take place on Saturday, 17th of April. Markle and Prince Harry lived in Nottingham Cottage on the grounds of Kensington Palace before they got married on the 19th of May 2018. They returned to the property two days after their ceremony, making it their first maritable home. London Residence is a two-bedroom house nicknamed Not Cot and was often described as snug since it's one of the more modest properties within Kensington Palace. Prince Harry actually lived at the home alone after he left the army, but moved out in 2011 so that his elder brother William and his wife Kate could have it as their first marital home before moving to Anne Hall in Norfolk. Shortly after, in 2013, Harry moved back in and stayed there until moving to Frogmore Cottage with Meghan on the grounds of Windsor Castle. Accordingly, if he's going to be next door to... Prince William, that would provide an opportunity for the two of them to speak, as outlined in previous parts of Part 38. Even though social distancing will have to occur, it would provide the opportunity for the two of them to take a walk together and for Prince William to speak with Harry in the way that I have described earlier, about effectively putting a metaphorical arm around him, if not literally done so, in order to elicit information from him as to how he is managing and what is actually happening. People have commented, of course, about the risk that what is said to Harry while he's in the United Kingdom being played back to Meghan Markle, and then, of course, that information being put out to a wider audience as we have seen has been the case previously. Now, of course, any husband is going to speak to his wife about what was discussed, narcissist or not. At the very least, it comes under pillow talk, and it is part of the social interaction between two individuals that when one returns, they will talk about what went on, and therefore that is to be expected. Of course, Members of the royal family will recognise this. The greater concern is, of course, that whatever is said to Prince Harry will naturally be passed on to Meghan Markle, and that Prince Harry cannot be relied upon to utilise discretion, as a consequence, of course, of the position that he finds himself in, beholden to her control, and not realising, at least yet, what is going on. 
Therefore, it should be taken as a given that whatever is said to Prince Harry will be relayed to Meghan. Most likely, out of a misguided sense of duty on his part, and also, as I've mentioned, that ordinarily, one part of the couple will tell the other what has gone on. The issue, of course, is what use Meghan Markle will make of it, and as a narcissist, having no sense of accountability, no emotional empathy, a sense of entitlement and no recognition of boundaries, the information will be utilised by her for particular purposes, as and when is required at a later juncture, for the purposes of asserting control in that moment. As I have explained previously, it's akin to the narcissism looking inside a box of tricks and saying, what can we use that has been accumulated by way of information in the past to utilise now, in this instant, to assert control? And therefore, the royal family must be mindful of what is said to Harry reaching her ears and then going further. And that is why, as I've explained, that the wider royal family should adopt the approach of just asking him how he is, acquiring how life is for him in California. And whilst it is understandable that many people believe that Prince Harry should be curled shouldered by members of the royal family before his conduct, it has to be remembered that he is still a member of that family, and the focus will be on Prince Philip. So, in a sense, whilst he won't be deliberately curled shouldered, it's not going to be about Prince Harry. There will be so much attention and focus on Prince Philip's funeral that Prince Harry isn't going to be the star of the show here. And therefore, he will have to slot in amongst everything else. Indeed, he will probably prefer that because it will mean that he doesn't feel like he's on the receiving end of repeated attention and tongue lashing about what has been going on. Instead, the focus is about Prince Philip and the funeral, which then means that with the wider members of the royal family focusing upon that, all that can be conveyed then to Meghan Markle is, it was all about Grandpapa's funeral. Where William, should this be done, has a conversation with him asking about how he's doing and his welfare, then again, all that will demonstrate is that a brother is concerned for his brother. And if that is relayed to Meghan Markle, then that is the case. Of course, such sentiments will wound her because it's about affection and kindness being exhibited towards Prince Harry and nothing to do with her. And as and when Prince Harry tells her about such a conversation, if it were to take place, or any conversation that he has with Prince William, Markle will feel wounded because it's a conversation between the two brothers about, for instance, the Duke of Edinburgh, about Prince Charles, about Prince Harry, and not about her. And therefore, she will need to respond at that time in a way to assert control over Prince Harry. If he has done something that's favourable, it's likely the case that she will comment, oh, I'm pleased that William was supportive. Or, alternatively, if he's asking questions about Harry's welfare, even though it is motivated from a position of caring and concern, Meghan Markle will interpret that as what's he asking for? Why is he being so intrusive? Why is he asking so many questions? Since when did he care? Etc. In order to belittle that concern for the purposes of assertion of control by smearing William to Harry when Harry has returned. Where caution needs to be exercises, of course, is of expressing concern about the behaviours that Harry has engaged in and of what he's experiencing. However, the way that it should be looked at is that, whilst it could get worse, conditions are not particularly fantastic to begin with. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are in the United States. An interview that was given portrayed the royal family as racist or as certain elements within it. And we all saw Prince William's reaction where he said we are very much not a racist family. The seething anger was palpable when he spoke to camera in that instance. Accordingly, they may well believe that anything that they do say with regard to Meghan Markle's behaviour, which is then conveyed to her, is not going to make the situation any more worse than it already is. And in effect, 
the, be- the potential benefits, as I explained in an earlier part, about showing Harry that he, there is concern for him to find out how he's doing outweighs the risk factor of that then being conveyed. It's not as if Prince William is going to sit him down and say, look, bro, you're ensnared by a mid-range narcissist. This is what she's doing. She's pulled you apart. She'll grind you into the dust. Or she'll make life very difficult for you with regard to the children, etc. Instead, Prince William's more likely to explain how the family miss Harry, that they're concerned for him, that they hope he would visit more often, and that to talk about is there any way that things can be improved. All of those sentiments, although when conveyed to Markle, she will twist them appropriately through the narcissistic lens of the necessity of imposing control, at least does mean that even if that is portrayed to the media, that it shows that William at least was caring. And therefore, if that information is leaked, it's not going to portray the royal family in a particularly bad light. Of course, privately, Meghan Markle will suggest, though they've got it in for me again, they're trying to drive a wedge between me and you, Harry. But all of those things will have been said already. And therefore, Prince William, if he were to proceed in the way that I outlined in a previous part, has nothing to lose in demonstrating that there is care and concern for Prince Harry, that they want to help him, and identifying any areas of concern. Remember, if, and of course it is an if, if Prince Harry starts to open up that things aren't as good as they ought to be, and Prince William notices this, and expresses his own concern. Because Prince Harry has been the one to admit that there are difficulties ongoing, he's far less likely to relay that aspect of the conversation to Meghan Markle. And therefore, she will not be handed the information with a view to being able to utilise it in any particular way. All Prince Harry would be more likely to do is talk about what happened, about the funeral, the fact that people are asking after them. Well, there's not much mileage out of that to leak it to the the Gale Kings of this world. Remember, the strategy ought not to be that Prince William immediately tears a strip off him. If he were to do that, Prince Harry would be defensive and, of course, would relay that to Meghan Markle, and that would only widen the gulf, as Meghan Markle will say, see... They've got it in for us both. You go there, it's the funeral, and all they can do is attack you and me. Told you we were better off staying in California. Harry agrees. Markle leaks that to the press. I don't see that Prince William would adopt such an approach. Instead, he will, of course, articulate his views of disappointment and concern. But if it is the case that Prince Harry is the one that opens up about how he's being treated, no matter to... even if it's to a small degree... He is not going to convey that back to Meghan Markle. He's not going to return and say, well, actually, darling, I've been telling them all how you beat me round the head with celery and that you lock me out of the house and that you don't talk to me and that you triangulate me with my child. He's not going to return saying, I told them all of that. Harry might not be the cleverest chap, but even he would know not to say such things. And therefore, if he's the one that opens up, and gives information to Prince William, which is of assistance, then Harry is not going to relay that to Markle. And therefore, the concern about Meghan Markle having information which could then be leaked is much reduced. The fact is that this does create an opportunity for Harry and William to have a conversation. And I believe that a conversation will take place between them about events that have occurred, And I'd outlined previously the appropriate strategy that William should adopt in those circumstances. And it appears that them isolating next door to one another would provide an opportunity for that to take place. In part 38.7, I'm going to discuss the fact that the revelation appertaining to Anne being identified as the individual who purportedly made the racist comments, in inverted commas, and how that impacts upon the role that I'd suggested appertaining to her playing bad cop. Join me in 38.7 to hear more about that.